The 2021 NFL coaching carousel has already been a wild one, as we've seen several NFL head coaches get fired, including a few surprises, including David Culley and Brian Flores of the Houston Texans and Miami Dolphins. Both of them were minority head coaches that a lot of people thought had actually done well or performed above expectation. At this current point in time, there is only one black head coach left standing in the NFL, and that is Mike Tomlin of the Pittsburgh Steelers. In a game in which minorities and people of color largely dominate NFL rosters, people have often wondered why there's such a small number of black head coaches in the NFL today. But another controversial debate even stemming from that is whether or not black head coaches are given a shorter leash than white NFL head coaches as we've seen a handful get fired after such a short amount of time with their organizations. So today I'm going to dive into the question of whether or not black head coaches are given less of an opportunity than white head coaches to succeed in the NFL. Before anything, I do want to make this next point very clear though, that a lot of people have made the focus black head coaches as opposed to minority head coaches. Because I think it's important to remember that the New York Jets and Washington football team, for example, both still have minority head coaches. They're not white, Robert Saleh and Ron Rivera. They are of Lebanese and Puerto Rican descent. So I thought that was important to make clear before we actually dive into this question. 70% of NFL rosters are made up solely by minority players. Yet only around 35% of NFL coaching staffs are minority coaches. A small portion of these minority coaches occasionally get the chance to be a head coach of an NFL team. Since the year 2000, there have been 24 black head coaches that have been chosen to be the head coach of an NFL team. A recent article that I discovered by Karan J. Phillips of Deadspin.com went over every single black head coach that has been hired since 2000 and how they fared. Before even getting into the list, I do want to say that most of them, yes, did not fare all that well. But this article from Deadspin does appear to be very slanted, and they went as far as to name who replaced the black head coach that was eventually fired and how they fared after the black head coach, pointing out that not many of them fared all that well either, implying that as if a lot of these teams that ended up firing their black head coaches made the wrong decision. I would say that they didn't necessarily make the wrong decision as much as that that black head coach was also not the answer. But without further opinion, let's get into the list. First was the New York Jets hiring Herm Edwards in 2001. Edwards ended up taking a 9-7 Jets team and making them one game better in his first year to 10-6. He would go on to coach five seasons for the Jets and make the playoffs in three of them. However, he was 41-44 overall in his tenure and could never really get over the hump in the playoffs, so the Jets eventually decided to move on and hire Eric Mangini. Next was the Colts in 2002 that hired Tony Dungy. Dungy was 92-33 and in seven seasons with the Colts and was one of the only black head coaches to win a Super Bowl. Dungy retired in 2008 and was replaced by Jim Caldwell. Funny thing I wanted to point out in this Deadspin article, though, is that they tend to name the record of the coaches that replaced the black head coach in what I took as an attempt to spite these organizations that fired the black head coach. But here we have a scenario where there was back-to-back -back black head coaches with Jim Caldwell replacing Tony Dungy. However, they did not put Jim Caldwell's record as the Colts head coach when Jim Caldwell actually took everything that Tony Dungy built in Indianapolis and didn't really do anything with it. But I digress. In 2003, the Cincinnati Bengals hired Marvin Lewis. He took over a 2-14 Bengals team and made them 8-8 eight eight in his first season. Lewis went on to be one of the longest tenured black head coaches in NFL history as he was there for 16 seasons. He was 131, 129, and 3 in his tenure there but never won a playoff game. Another scenario in which the coach just was simply not able to get over the hump and the team wanted something new. He was replaced by Zach Taylor, who is now about to take the Bengals to the playoffs in his third season. Next was Lovey Smith with the Bears in 2004. Smith had a losing record his first season, but turned them around the next year going 11-5 and and winning coach of the year. Smith also had a Super Bowl appearance and three postseason appearances overall, including losing Super Bowl XLI to the Colts. But after going 84-66 and as the Bears head coach, Lovey Smith was eventually fired. In 2004, it was Dennis Green with the Arizona Cardinals. Dennis Green did not have a single winning season in three seasons with Arizona and was eventually fired and replaced by Ken Wisenhunt. In 2005, was Romeo Cornell with the Cleveland Browns. He went 24-20 and in four seasons and was eventually fired. In 2006, my Kansas City Chiefs hired Herm Edwards, and this was his second stint as a head coach. Edwards was hired in Kansas City after the team was 10-6 and under Dick Vermeil in his last year. Edwards would end up going 15-34. and 34. 
He made the postseason once and it was a devastating loss to the Indianapolis Colts. His tenure resulted in him getting fired and the Chiefs moving on to Todd Haley. In 2006, we had Art Shell with the Oakland Raiders. It was his final stint as a head coach. He lasted one year, posting a 2-14 record. 2007, the Pittsburgh Steelers hired Mike Tomlin, who is still coaching them to this day, and he's by far the best on the list. And he's had 15 straight non-losing seasons, including a Super Bowl win and two Super Bowl appearances. In 2008, the San Francisco 49ers hired Mike Singletary as their interim coach after they fired Mike Nolan. Singletary was 5-4 and four as the interim coach, and he was then hired full-time and went 8-8 eight and eight in his lone full season. He was fired the next season after starting out the year 5-10, and 10, was replaced by Jim Harbaugh. 2009 was when Jim Caldwell took over for the Indianapolis Colts after Tony Dungy. He was 14-2 and two in his first season with the Colts and made it to the Super Bowl where they lost to the Drew Brees Saints. Then, in three seasons total in Indianapolis, Caldwell was 28-24 and and replaced by Chuck Pagano. In 2009, following John Gruden's run in Tampa Bay, they hired Raheem Morris. Morris was 17-31 and in three seasons and later replaced by Greg Schiano. In 2011, Leslie Frazier was named the Vikings NRM head coach after they fired Brad Childress. Frazier finished the year 3-3 three and, three and got the NRM tag taken off before coaching three full seasons with the Vikings, where he compiled an 18-20 and 20 record and was later fired for Mike Zimmer. In 2011, we had Hugh Jackson with the Raiders. Jackson only got one season where he went 8-8 eight and eight and started the year 7-4. and four. He was replaced by Dennis Allen. In 2012, my Kansas City Chiefs hired Romeo Cronell, who took over for Todd Haley after his disastrous tenure. Cronell finished his lone season 2-14 and 14, and was replaced by Andy Reid, who took that 2-14 and 14 team and made the playoffs in his very first year. In 2014, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers hired Lovey Smith, who was not nearly as successful as he was in Chicago. Smith went 8-24 and in two seasons and was then replaced by Dirk Ketter. In 2014, Jim Caldwell got another chance with the Lions after they fired Jim Schwartz. Caldwell was in Detroit for four seasons where he went 36-30 and during his tenure. They made the playoffs twice but were never able to go very far. The Lions decided they were unhappy with Caldwell's performance and fired him. In 2015, the Jets hired Todd Bowles. Bowles went 10-6 and in his first season, but then was 24-40 and overall in his four years for the Jets. He was then replaced by Adam Gase. In 2016, Hugh Jackson was hired once again as the Cleveland Browns head coach. It was now his second shot to get going, and he only won three games in two and a half seasons with the Browns. He was by far one of the worst head coaching hires in NFL history. In 2017, the Broncos opted to go with Vance Joseph as their head coach after Gary Kubiak stepped down. Joseph was 11-21 in his two seasons with the Broncos before being replaced by Vic Fangio, who was fired this past Sunday. In 2017, the Chargers hired Anthony Lynn after Mike McCoy went 4-12 and 5-11 and in his last two seasons. Lynn went on a surprising playoff run with the Chargers in 2018 where they lost to the Patriots in the second round. But he compiled a 34 and 32 overall record in four seasons and was replaced by Brandon Staley. In 2018, the Arizona Cardinals went with Steve Wilkes as the successor to Bruce Arians, and Steve Wilkes only lasted one season and went 3 and 13 and was replaced by Cliff Kingsbury. In 2019, the Miami Dolphins hired Brian Flores, the Patriots assistant, and he only got two seasons with the team. Flores was right around 500 in two seasons with the team, and his firing got people riled up the most. We'll talk about him a little bit later, though. Lastly, we had David Culley, who went 4-12 in his lone season as head coach. He was hired by the Texans in the 2020 offseason and only got one season to do anything. I've gathered a lot of data after going over this list myself in my free time, and here's what I have been able to gather. If you take every single one of these black head coaches' records and combine them, you will get a combined win percentage of 496, which is just below 500, so a losing record. So you can do what you wish with that information. Obviously, that doesn't tell the entire story, though, but I do think it was worth mentioning. That said, after further research, I was able to come away with some really interesting bits of data that really do work against this narrative out there that black head coaches are given a shorter leash than white head coaches. According to GildingMetrics.com, the average tenure for an NFL head coach is 3.2 seasons. After combining all the tenors of the previously mentioned black coaches and calculating the average, you might be surprised to learn that the average tenure for black coaches since 2000 is 4.1 seasons, nearly a whole season more than the average for NFL head coaches. 
Some people may point out that coaches like Tony Dungy and Mike Tomlin really carry that average, which skews the data some, but at the same time, I have extremities on the other end of the spectrum like David Coley and Steve Wilkes that only lasted one season, so that kind of cancels things out. Plus, it's not like you can just erase the tenures of Tony Dungy and Mike Tomlin like they never happened. You know, they still contribute to the data because they were black head coaches. Given that the average tenure for an NFL head coach is 3.2 seasons, and I also personally believe that three seasons is a fair amount of time to be given to a head coach before you learn what they may or may not be, feel free to disagree with me there, but I'm going with three seasons. I also took a closer look at the coaches that did last three seasons or more and how they fared in their three seasons or more. Among the 24 black head coaching hires since 2000, 16 of them lasted three seasons or more. That means a majority of the list of 24 black head coaches hired since 2000 lasted about the same length of the average tenure for an NFL head coach. From those 16 hires, just 8 of them ended their tenure with a winning record. And the combined win percentage of the group was 524. And that number drops deep below 500 if you take away the tenures of Tony Dungy and Mike Tomlin. And even a lot of the coaches from this list that technically did end with a winning record, a handful of them were only a smidgen beyond 500. Names such as Jim Caldwell, Lovey Smith, and Anthony Lynn, after posting rather mediocre overall records with their team in three seasons or more thus proving the point that NFL teams typically don't like to put up with mediocrity all that often. I also found it interesting that five of the coaches from this list of 16 ended up getting hired twice after being fired from their first job. So it's not like a retread black NFL head coach is this unheard of concept in the NFL. A lot of people like to complain about the fact that white coaches seem to get chance after chance, meanwhile black coaches, well, don't. And secondly, black head coaches are given a second chance in some scenarios. Heck, we're about to see some retreads get hired in this current NFL head coaching carousel. Names like Leslie Frazier, Brian Flores, and Todd Bowles immediately come to mind. That being said, the five names from this list that ended up getting hired a second time are 1. Herm Edwards, 2. Romeo Cornell, 3. Jim Caldwell, 4. Hugh Jackson, and 5. Lovey Smith. In fact, two of those five... Hugh Jackson and Herm Edwards were hired a second time despite not posting a winning record with their previous team. You know, I think one of the funniest parts about this whole debate is that I can end it with a singular example, one NFL head coach's tenure, and that's Hugh Jackson. I just don't understand how people so easily gloss over the fact that he was a black head coach that got hired a second time after not even having a winning record in his first stint went to the Cleveland Browns, had an 1-15 season, followed that up with an 0-16 season, and then still got to return for a third one. But, yeah, anyway, people are obviously going to put an emphasis on the coaches on this list that, you know, only got to stay for one or two seasons. They're going to say, why were those guys fired so quickly? You know, this is evidence that black head coaches have a shorter leash than white head coaches in the NFL. So, as far as the coaches that seasons are less, I think people like to make it more complicated than it really is when a lot of these coaches get fired. They just like to jump the gun and say that it was a racist move. But a lot of the times, there's a pretty simple explanation. Eight of the 24 black NFL head coaches that were hired since 2000 fired after two seasons or less. Not a single one finished with a winning record. Five of the eight only lasted one season, and four of those five ended up winning four games or less in their lone season. So, I can understand an argument where people say that one or two years isn't really enough for a coach to show something, but at the same time, a lot of these coaches that were fired were fired because they were truly that bad. And fans of teams that hired these coaches can attest to this better than I do, but a lot of them know that like when you watch these teams, there wasn't a great sense of a direction, and there didn't seem to be a visible path to things getting better. I mean, guys, listen to this. Art Shell, 2-14 in one season. Mike Singletary, 18-22 in two and a half seasons. Hugh Jackson, 8-8 eight and eight in one year. Romeo Cornell, 2-14 in, in a single season. Lovey Smith, 8-24 in, in two seasons. Vance Joseph, 11-21 in, in two seasons. Steve Wilkes, 3-13 in, in year one. And Dave Coley, 4-13 in, in year one. 
A lot of people are going to point to the situation, though, and say that these coaches didn't have great rosters to work with. On the other hand, though, that doesn't mean you should still be that bad, even with a underwhelming roster in a lot of these cases. And situation is a factor for every single head coach, not just black head coaches. There are a lot of white head coaches that get handed really terrible situations. And believe it or not, yes, there's a lot of them that do not make it out. This theme where coaches get fired after just one or two seasons is not exclusive to black head coaches, and I really don't have to go back very far to find white head coaches that had the rug pulled out from under them after one or two seasons. I mean, there's Joe Judge, there's Urban Meyer, Adam Gase, Freddie Kitchens, Lou Holtz, Chip Kelly in one year with the San Francisco 49ers went 2-14 and and he was gone, Jim Tomsula, Bobby Petrino, and when I say those names, I'm going to get people that f- give feedback of, oh, well, those coaches suck. Well, that's exactly what I'm saying with these blackhead coaches. I mean, guys, Romeo Cronell sucked. Art Shell was terrible. They don't get absolved of a terrible coaching job simply because of their skin color. Are there some that maybe you can make a case that they could have done a little bit better with some more time? Sure, but you could say that for a lot of head coaching tenures. By nature, the NFL is going to have coaches that go one and done, that only have a couple seasons and then they're gone. Black or white. Nevertheless, there's a lot of people that are especially riled up in this year's head coaching carousel because guys like Brian Flores and David Coley got fired, and David Coley technically outperformed expectations, and Brian Flores ended the year on a seven-game winning streak and actually did okay with the Dolphins. So people are obviously upset by this and they're pointing to it and calling it racist. While racism is an overly easy and effective way to explain why a black head coach got fired, there's two sides to every story. And it's no different with David Coley and Brian Flores. In fact, I brought my friend Connor to collaborate with me on this project and offer a differing perspective and an explanation as to why Brian Flores and David Coley were fired and really just his general take on black head coaches in the NFL. So, Connor, what's the deal with Dave Culley and Brian Flores? Well, let me preface it with Brian Flores was one of my favorite coaches. I thought he was a really good coach before this entire debacle happened. And initially, it makes sense to claim that it could be racism because, like, you probably would think the worst when just this good coach gets fired right but when you actually like look at it race has nothing to do with it the reason he was fired was a power struggle with Chris Greer and just based on context clues I'm assuming it revolved around quarterback to attack of Iloa which Tua hasn't really gotten a fair shake at things, in my opinion. Like, I don't think he's been bad, and everyone, like, acts like he's the worst quarterback of all time. You know, people are acting like Brian Flores is going out there with Daniel Jones, but maybe Tua hasn't been a world beater, but I think he's been solid. And I saw a report, I don't know the validity of it, that Brian Flores told Tua that they should have drafted Mac Jones. And that's just not something you do as a head coach. And there was so many rumors about how Watson wanted to be with Flores and about how uh, Flores wanted Watson, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, it seems like Chris Greer still had confidence in Tua. And like one of the reasons I say that is because Uh, He had the number three overall pick. If he really didn't like Tua, he could have taken Trey Lance or Mac Jones or somebody with that third pick. Instead, he traded it, went back, and got one of Tua's college receivers in Jalen Waddell. To me, the Waddell pick just shows that they believed in Tua. And uh, I just think that the issue wasn't that uh, Flores was black. I think the issue was Flores didn't believe in Tua which is a nice segue to the next black head coach that was fired, David Culley. Now, when David Culley was hired, he wasn't ever like a highly sought after candidate. I don't think he interviewed for any other head coaching job. And I think the comments when he initially got the interview was like your standard, 
oh, this is to fulfill the Rooney rule comments that you see, you know, Twitter users post all the time. And uh, he was a wide receivers coach on the Ravens and Ravens fans would frequently complain about the receivers and his ability to coach them. And like, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know Cully's resume off the back of my hand and um, or off the top of my head, rather. But uh, I remember that he was a wide receivers coach in Kansas City and our receivers were not good back then. We had like J Mac, Chris Conley, and not really anybody during David Coley's tenure. So he didn't really develop anybody. So there doesn't really seem to be any like upside or reasoning that Coley was there. I think that uh, it was a panic hire because. They fired Bill O'Brien before anyone else uh, fired their coaches, and they were still the last team to hire a coach. So I always said that David Culley was just a panic hire. Uh, David Culley seems like a really nice and likable guy, so they just panic hired a nice dude who they knew could control the locker room and uh, settle the fan base down for a season uh, and now that uh, Flores got, got fired, I think that he's going to be the guy in Houston. And, you know, it clearly shows that the Houston Texans aren't a racist organization if they replace their black head coach with a black head coach that they think is better, because that shows that race has nothing to do with it and that it was just skill based. And, you know, I feel bad for David Culley. Uh, even though I don't think he necessarily was good or really even deserved the opportunity in the first place. He was a good guy. Uh, he enjoyed the opportunity. He get, he made a bunch of money, so I don't feel too bad for him. Uh, but, you know, he kind of got screwed over. He was always going to be like a sacrificial lamb. I call him a glorified intern, and I don't think he was ever supposed to be the guy in Houston. And I think that guy is going to be Brian Flores. And Cully will probably end up being a wide receivers coach somewhere else now. And any other last comments? Well, I think um, there's going to be several hired in this hiring process. Like I tweeted out my predictions and I had several being hired to, uh, like I have Brian Flores going to Houston, as I said. I think Eric Bieniemy ends up in Minnesota. Uh, I think I had Leslie Frazier going to the Bears. Uh, I had Todd Bowles going to the Broncos. Byron Leftwich going to the Jaguars. I think the only white coaches I had being hired was Brian Dable to the uh, Dolphins. And I picked that because he was Tua's offensive coordinator at Alabama and he had success with him. So if Chris Greer really believes in Tua, who's a better coach to come in and coach him than Brian Dable. And uh, I think I had Doug Peterson going to the Giants, and obviously he's white. But outside of that, that's five black head coaches in this hiring cycle. And I think the problem is less uh, black head coaches getting a fair opportunity because there's a lot of shitty coaches that don't uh, deserve their opportunity that they get it like Cliff Kingsbury, Zach Taylor, Mike McCarthy, just bad head coaches off the top of my head who we knew were bad but still got hired. And I think there's uh, uh, also like black head coaches who uh, overstay their welcome, like uh, Hugh Jackson and Marvin Lewis are two that immediately come to mind. Uh, Anthony Lynn people were breathing down his neck wanting him out uh before his last season and uh i think there's white coaches that uh get the rug pulled out on them out seemingly out of nowhere at times uh one that comes to mind is i was stunned when the giants fired tom coffin and um uh, honestly i was surprised that the vikings pulled the plug on mike zimmer this year and i think it was absolutely outrageous that the Eagles fired Doug Peterson when they did. So I don't think that any of the moves 
uh, that I have brought up are race based. And I think that a lot of the time people mistake incompetence for racism. Truth of the matter is there's not very many good coaches in the league right now. And uh, it's just hard to get a good coach. And, you know, they're going, some teams are trigger happy. Some teams aren't. And a lot of them just make really dumb decisions and if they make a dumb decision involving a black coach, people are just going to assume it's racism. But a lot of the times it's just because these owners make horrible decisions. So all in all, the conversation surrounding whether or not black NFL head coaches are being given a fair shot compared to white NFL head coaches seems to be one that's being based upon emotion and pushing narratives. Because based on the data that we provided in this video, our thoughts, our info. The idea that black NFL head coaches are given a shorter leash is just flat out false. I think the main number you have to look at here is the average tenure length of a black NFL head coach since 2000, which is 4.1 seasons, which is nearly a full season more than the average tenure length for all NFL head coaches. So really, black NFL head coaches hired in the modern NFL are sticking around for longer than the league average. Just to clarify, I really do think there's been a lot of narrative pushing with this topic. And I mean, I've seen it on Twitter myself. Uh, I know Adam Schefter pointed out the fact that there was only one black NFL head coach left in Mike Tomlin after a few coaches were fired. And then also Matt Miller on Twitter said that it's embarrassing that there's only one black NFL head coach. And quite frankly, to me, that's just stirring shit up because it's really pointless to tweet something like that here in January when the offseason hasn't even started yet, and there's a pretty good chance that we get three to five new black NFL head coaches by the time it's all said and done. And once again, if we include minorities in this and not just black people, there's actually a pretty good chance we're looking at like six or seven minority NFL head coaches in total. Now, where I think people have a legitimate case to make is the hiring process. It is a little sketchy that in a sport where there's a lot of black players, there's just so little black head coaches. I definitely think the Rooney rule has only hurt the chances of black head coaches getting hired. I think it makes teams feel forced to have to interview someone of color, thus not giving them a real shot of getting the job. My best possible attempt at answering why there haven't been a ton of NFL black head coaches hired is that there's simply been a lack of good candidates. But this video was strictly aimed towards answering the question of whether or not black head coaches truly are given a shorter leash than white head coaches, and I think we did an effective job at answering that question for you guys. Based on our data, black head coaches are actually being given a fair shot once they're actually hired. But I think a recent run of them being fired over the last few years has left a bad taste in people's mouths. But at the end of the day, I find it funny that people will claim these organizations are racist for firing a black NFL head coach when they were obviously confident enough to hire one in the first place. So yeah, that's all I got for you guys in today's video. Thank you so, so much for listening and watching. It means a lot. But please, make sure you like, share, and subscribe so more people can find this. And make sure this video reaches the people that need to see it. But until then, I'll see you in the next one.